Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today, I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a villager trading hall and cartography room in one, since they're actually quite interlinked. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Right here, you can see the entrance to this place. Well, the big hallway with the entrance right there. And you can see, on either side, I have about 5 blocks, which means this is a 10 block wide area. And this should provide enough walking room. And then, only the center is birch, mainly because I can do something with copper grates or something else to make these other areas more interesting. And then, we'll need to segment the walls, because we're going to have rooms for each of the villager professions. Of course, there are 13 professions, and you're probably going to want more of one than the other. Personally, I'd say you probably want more librarians or masons than anything, although mileage may vary depending on what you actually need. So, if you don't need a fisherman, then you don't actually have to build as much. So, what you want to do is build a little room like this. 3x3 three three is all you need, although you might want to do a little bit larger, although that might put it out of reach. And then, segmentation, like this. Don't forget about your back, and then these wide areas here, of course, are for the villager we need more of. And then, for all of this, you'll need to have a roof that wraps around like this. Where, I start here with the spruce, but the dark oak is one block further. If I do stairs with the spruce, then I do stairs with the dark oak, and then they get longer and longer to do a nice arc like this. You can pause and look at this if you're having trouble with that concept. Then. What you want to do is copy that over and over, and when you do it enough times, then you'll have a comprehensive room with spruce, and then you'll be able to add more to this. Also, don't forget about under your staircase. I just use cobblestone, first time since January surprisingly, and then added some stairs to make it more interesting. And these areas here can also be used for storage, because let's be honest, there are some items that you're just not going to keep inside of your base, but you probably need for trading, because let's be honest, who's keeping 55 oak boats here. In here, I've done a lot of work, and this might seem daunting, but I can surely explain. Right here, I have some spruce, this is the same roof design, and I copied it repeatedly. And you'll notice some extra things. Of course, I have the actual villager chambers here, but that's going to be for a moment. And then, right here, I added some stairs. So, corner stair, stair, corner stair, and then I have a block poke out, stair, stair, and then I have lanterns on some of them. Not all of them, because otherwise it would be too symmetric and might provide too much lighting. In case you're wondering, yes, that is a thing. You can see here, when it's a bit darker in the middle, it provides a different mood, and although that might be too much darkness, though, try playing around with the lighting a bit more, and see how the asymmetry works. Of course in here, I'm going to need more lighting. And then, for these smaller rooms, I have a bunch of stripped logs. At the top, oak, and then a lantern, dark oak planks going around in the stair format. And then, some stripped birch for the walls. And then, for the trim on the bottom, some sideways stripped spruce, and then a thatched pattern of dark oak. If you're wondering how I did those floorings, here's how you do it. You place one block sideways, and then you snake around like this. And when you do this repeatedly, you can create a very interesting design. This works for any directional block, although you might have varying results, especially if you're doing it with basalt, but it works with every stripped log and to a degree the normal logs. So try it out and see how it works for you. And now, with the cobbled deep site here, the extra stairs here because it just looked fancy, and the lighting along with both sides of the room having a little bit more dark oak in order to solidify them. You can see how I added extra blocks here in order to round off the room. Now, we can really start doing the villager stuff. And you'll notice these gaps I have above the doors, where I have a stair and then a slab instead of an empty block. You'd probably expect me to go like that and then fill it in there, and sure that looks pretty. But there's something else you can do here, even if you fill in those other two blocks. 
you can put in the tool station. So I'm going to put in a blast furnace, you know, alphabetically. And now I know exactly where my armors are. There's the blast furnaces. So as long as you can remember the block for the profession, then you can do it. Of course, some professions don't have full blocks, so you'll have to make substitutes. But still, it's a surefire way in order to make sure you don't get lost in here. So place down all of the blocks you need in order to designate your stations. Now, with our areas set up with blocks representing them, of course a lot of them weren't full or I just had different ideas. Now, this room is ready for your villagers. And this is how you do it. You can either use trapdoors, fences, or walls. But trapdoors are probably the easiest for you to do. You know, because fences have a weird crafting recipe. And it lets you go in and out if need be. Say there's something you need in here, or you're recycling trades. And then you place your villagers in here, where you put their workstation in the back and their beds in the front. That way you can wake them up in case you need to trade at night. And also, since there's two villagers in here and three beds, in case one of them is not there, or it somehow goes missing, well, throw some bread at them, and now you have another one. Although, this place is not baby villager proof. We'll probably need some fences here, but even then they'll probably get over. So if there's a baby villager in there, your best bet's to lock it up with more trapdoors. Anyways, repeat this cycle through all of your stations, including your larger ones. Right here, because I know people love having librarians for every enchantment. I only get ones for mending and breaking, but still. You can have a bunch in here. So, just repeat this design all around with your proper workstations, and now your villager trading hall is 100% operational. Also, don't forget about putting a hole through your staircase in case you have areas in the back here. Both of these are meant for weaponsmiths and toolsmiths since they cover very similar niches. With the villagers now in place, then you should be ready to do pretty much the rest of the build. And this is actually really short. Since I have villagers here, not adding any more because noise complaints don't want the neighbors yelling at me. You have to give each grouping 32 bread. This will activate their willingness mode and thus make them start dropping a lot more XP. Instead of giving only like 4.5 XP on average per trade, they start giving 9.5. Which means while this might not be the most efficient setup, though this setup gives you way more XP, more than double, which means it's pretty much better in the long term. So with all this area set up, don't forget about to your things in the back in case you run out of room, put toolsmiths and weaponsmiths under the same thing because let's be honest we're just using them for iron, some storage, don't use barrels because that breaks villager AI because well, barrels are used to buy fishermen, and your villager trading hall is finished. However, if it goes onto the surface, you're going to have to do slightly more. This can easily be fixed with stairs though. So grab yourself some dark oak and spruce and get their stairs again. And this will be relatively simple. You just need to smooth it out and pretend like this is the interior again. So something really simple like this going on would probably solve it. And now it's time for the cartography room. If you have skylight access, make sure to use a giant window. Otherwise you can still build this, but perhaps you don't want it to be hooked up to the villager trading hall. With the inside done, it's time to go to the outside. Place some trapdoors above the doors to make it look fancier. Just don't look up in this area and cover it up from the other side. And now I have an area. Of course, the exterior is just spruce and dark oak alternating like this. And now I'm into this room. This is our cartography slash map room. And what you want to do here is do the dark oak flooring but with birch. So you can see alternating logs. And you might also want to change the shape of this room. Right now it's just a perfect square and that can be kind of boring. But if you're to make it more circular like this and then cut off the corner to accommodate. And of course that's up to you but I think it works. If you're hanging over a ledge then just do a cobblestone foundation going down. And then decorate it with some stairs to make it look worn down. If need be add mossy cobblestone. But essentially something like this can provide a nice curved wall. But don't forget you're going to need some flat ones for your maps. And now, it's time to do all that. Just some basic walls for the time being, don't overthink it. Using that curved wall, I made a large window. And you'll notice that I added the stairs, did the mossy cobble with the extra stairs, 
and I still have not done a roof, and I'm not going to just yet. Because if you do a curved thing like this, and your thing does not properly press up against a wall, you might want to mirror it and just have a larger room. And honestly, that's probably the best course of action, considering this room would not have enough room anyways. So continue out your thing until it reaches a natural conclusion. And don't forget about this design right here. If you're really struggling, then you can use it. Although, perhaps try looking for another solution before resorting for that. Since, of course, it can get really repetitive really quickly. But if you're really struggling, it's perfectly fine to use. With this area starting to be mirrored with spruce planks instead, now it's really coming together. And you'll also notice I have a roof. What I did here is I made this final smaller segment and then made the roof glass. Then I started with the stairs on the inside, made it a little bit flatter, and put this big pillar in the middle. And then the rest of it, I went up another block with these stairs, of course the central pillar jutting out a little, and then some dark oak plank surrounding it, and then some glass. And it's not actually symmetrical right now, in fact I made a few mistakes along the way, but still, this roof is, for most purposes, done. Continue your flooring, do the spruce walls, make sure it's actually symmetrical, unlike me, and then, once you're done with that, you should be ready to start adding your decorations. Alright, so I now have this whole place decorated, which makes it much easier to dissect how I did it. First off, you'll notice the paintings. And yeah, I highly recommend paintings. And then, you'll also need glow item frames in order to make sure it looks good, or you could hide some glowstone behind item frames and then put your maps on it for hidden lighting. Either way, you need maps. Then, from here, you might want to have little showcase areas of the biomes you've visited. Right here, even though Mycelium Island is not pictured, still I have a little area here, and a little mushroom held up by an end rod, and a cute little trick you can do. Since how poor textures work on this, you can place a block there, and now you can place the end rod upside down. And look, now the mushroom looks a lot more convincing. Then, this wall here has a dark oak log background, which I can do because it's pressed up to the underground. Of course, if you cannot do that, then no worries, but still, try changing the backgrounds of your walls if you can. This extra storage here is just for like maps, glass panes, etc. And then here, I just placed another chest because it's funny. And for the cartography tables themselves, I have one out in the open like this, but sometimes it might not be oriented correctly, especially since cartography tables are not directional for some reason which means I was able to use them as little floorboards here. Well, baseboards. And what do you know, cartography table hidden right there. Then I have a carpet here, simple chair design, flower pots around, and I even held up some turtle eggs here for good measure. So don't forget about your shelves, decorated pots, etc. And if you can afford it, try putting some pottery shards on these. However, I'm probably going to leave these plain. Don't forget your crafting table, and otherwise, this room is now complete and make sure that you have your lighting in there. Holding up lanterns by chains of varying heights works, and your banner so that way you can mark it on a map. And what do you know, looks really nice from the outside so you have an extra thing to complement your villager trading hall. So, with this, after a month's worth of tutorials, this giant base here is complete. And yeah, if you basically follow a few of my tutorials in a row, you can make yourself a gigantic base, and it's relatively easy to do. I mean, both of these separately are pretty easy tutorials, and it might be hard to do them back to back or connect them, but still, it shouldn't be too hard if you have the resources. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.